trade for a day with no losses. You keep the profits, we cover your losses at CMC Markets. In about 12 minutes, the bells are going to ring and trading will start. And our next guest warns of speculative froth in the commodity markets. To get her take on what investors should do about it, Diana Avigdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital, joins us now. Good morning, Diana. Good morning. Well, talking about speculative froth, a lot of people would say that that froth has been eliminated with the correction we've seen uh, just over the last couple of weeks. Do you agree with that or, or you see more pull back? Uh, what a bad day to go against the Goldman call that everybody is, call, is talking about. Uh, to be fair, they downgraded the commodities uh, a, a month ago, and now they've gone uh, positive. Um, so, uh, you know, the, my, my angle on the commodities is um, that it, it is now um, an exposure. Uh, if you can get exposed as a, just as an asset class. It used to be equities, bonds, and to a lesser extent, uh, foreign exchange. And the stocks that you bought that were uh, commodity-driven um, were still just the equities. Now there's a whole new asset class, just directly commodities, where people, um, and not just institutional uh, managers or, um, or uh, people that are in a business um, of commodities, of oil, imports, exports, that sort of thing, Anyone can invest in this. So through that, uh, there's really been uh, a huge increase in trading um, this sector, as you could see by the volumes. And I'm not the only one who thought so. The, the uh, margin requirements that were uh, increased over the last few weeks have shown you that the uh, authorities also thought that that was required in order, and, and, it, and, it, and it burst a little bit of the bubble. Whether it continues to go on or not, it's really going to depend on the macro environment. It is also a proxy for economic growth. And as long as economic growth continues and we continue to correct our economies two steps forward, one step back, and perhaps we're through the one step back now, um, I think it's going to keep on going as long as we have China growing, as long as we have India growing, as long as we have emerging markets, despite the, the, the correction that we've been having in the last few weeks. It is entirely possible from my perspective that there is further sloppiness ahead um, for, for several um, macro and micro reasons. Well, the sloppiness in the commodities, maybe a lot more volatility. What about the companies that a lot of Canadian investors want to think about? Are there opportunities there because they haven't tracked the froth the, to the same extent? That's right. I, um, I heard, a, um, I was talking to a trader and, and this sentence stood out in my mind as exhibiting the market characteristics right now. The market is driven by sentiment, positioning and currency flows and the fundamentals have been left for academics right now. <laughs> <laughs> you and I have been talking about equity correlations in past interviews. Equity correlations have gone from uh, low 20s to about 31% the last two weeks. Uh, they've increased. What that means that all stocks are exhibiting market characteristics. In other words, it's the macro that's driving the stocks, not their own fundamental um, fundamental characteristics. Um, so, so, Diana, isn't, isn't that an opportunity then? You know, uh, that's a sentiment of, of higher risk mm, coming on. Okay. The options market is pricing in a 56 uh, percent correlation. That's about 20 uh, plus points higher than the, the, correla the, the existing correlations, which tells you that traders are expecting those correlations to continue to rise for, uh, for, ma for, for macro reasons. And one of the things you're looking at, a lot of uh, traders do and technical analysts do, the 200-day moving average. In most cases, I just looked at the S&P 500 and the, uh, the S&P TSX. We're a long way from the 200. Could we get down there? So we could perfectly well get down there and from a technical perspective, every technician is going to tell you we're in an uptrend long term, but given the rally that we've had um, in the last few months, it's not entirely unthinkable that we're going to have a little bit of a correction. It's seasonally the right time. Um, and I'll also bring up another statistic that, uh, another data point that we look at um, in our data, data model. We look at the number of stocks above, that are trading above their 200 uh, day moving average. And a few weeks ago, a month, month, a little over a month ago, it hit 80%. Meant that 80% of the stocks that we, in that universe, were trading above their 200 day moving average. That number has now dropped to a below 60%. And in the last 40 years, 16 out of 17 times that that model broke the 60% point went to 40% and often even lower. So anchoring this in the context of the recent rally, there's no reason that we cannot go through a period of sloppiness, 
going in the, uh, the from a short-term ta tactical uh, perspective. And so, Diana, what do we do? Do we sit on our hands or do we start a buy list and just wait for things to come to us? You build a farm list <laughs> of stocks that you like. As a short-term trader, you sell your rallies. And uh, if you're an institutional trader or any other trader that's looking to sell something, um, if you get the liquidity opportunity, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and just a final question, ma'am. Banks, are people positioning for a good bank uh, reporting season or a bad one? Um, so I think that money is rotating. I've seen money rotating into the financials. Um, and um, we're expecting a, a, a decent quarter. Um, the, the, the first quarter of the year uh, should have been good for the likes of Royal Bank. Uh, we're looking for, uh, for their capital uh, investment division to do well. We're looking for increases in dividends, uh, National Bank uh, primarily. Um, so, yeah, we're expecting a decent, uh, a decent quarter from the financials, um, and I hope, they, um, I hope they trade well on that. I hope they live up to it as well, Diana. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Diana Avigdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital. We've got some stocks to watch. They're coming right up.